Boom. Hey, internet friends. This is Magic Brad with The Magic Brad Show. What's that? That's my ear. His name is Zachary, and the last name is Linder, L-I-N-D-E-N-E-R. Is you there, Zachary? Yep, I am. You're on a phone because you had some computer difficulties, but that's the miracle of the internet. You got one of these things, you can talk to anybody in the world. <laughs> what, part of, what part of the world are you in? Chicago. Chicago. We're like neighbors. I'm in Minneapolis, Minnesota. These, oh, nice. I the love The burger that. capitals of the world these days. Go have, strong. We have great. <laughs> I have a message for those people. Stop it. <laughs> like they're going to listen. <laughs> but if they see this video, maybe if we talk about all that stuff and those keywords get into the algorithms, we'll get more views on this video. That is true. I mean, Chicago, everyone loves talking about Chicago, even though they don't live here. It they all have good. an opinion about it. Peace. Peace. Just relax. Chill out. Okay. It's How real hard you, for people to chill out right now. How long have you lived in Chicago? I moved here seven years ago. I graduated college originally from Maryland, uh, Baltimore area, and then I moved out here, right, like I said, right after college. What drew you to Chicago? Um, I, my dad moved uh, like sophomore year of college to Fort Wayne, Indiana. And then my mom lives in Mississippi. So when I graduated, I was like, I need to go. And then I moved in with him for two months. It's like, get me out of here now. And it was either Indianapolis or Chicago. And clearly I made the worst decision. Okay. <laughs> Home is where the heart is. is great. Oh, it, oh Indianapolis. So well, I'm in Minneapolis, Minnesota. I've been deep, deep roots here. I've been here all my life other than a couple of years in North uh, Los Angeles and a couple of years in North Carolina. Oh, uh, nice. Did you like LA or not really? Um, it's a nice place to visit, but I wouldn't want to live there. Yeah, um, I've heard that. It's, uh, there's a lot of cool stuff going on, but you don't ever see snow. There's no change in the seasons. It's always short sleeve weather. And uh, the people, especially in like the Southern, the, Ho the Hollywood area, they're kind of pretentious. Yeah. So they work different. Like the way I explain it on, on the East side of New York, they tell you like it is, that's how it's going to be. And then the Midwest, they never make a decision. And in LA, they tell you how it's going to be, but that's not really how it's going to be. <laughs> it's weird like because I'll have like I remember uh going to Portland a couple of years ago and I'm from the east coast so we're very like straightforward and everyone's like saying thank you and I'm like what is this place what's going on we're not this nice on the east coast that's what I mean see that's the way it happened we all landed on the east coast and people migrated west and they got more kind and then at the end they got it's, it's weird Fake. out there yeah, and I don't want to diss the people out in LA and stuff, but it's it's the mentality because they are actors in Southern California. That's what it is. I feel like it's an acting. It's weird because I feel like with LA, it's very like who do you know to connect me into like the industry? While in L, I mean New York, it's like who do you know for social standing? And in the Midwest, we're like we're forgot about anyway, so we don't care who you are. <laughs> like, it's just it's the reality of it. Yeah. <laughs> Well, let's get into it. I read a little bit on here. Are you a are you an author or you write movie scripts? I am an author. Novelist. I novelist. yep, novelist. I wrote a book called Silent Screams uh, that came out two months okay. ago. So wait, hold on. Should have had one. <laughs> so this is what it looks like. It's all nice and pretty. There we go. Yeah. So I wrote Silent that. Um, came out uh, two months ago. Like I said. Um, so yeah, it's my 50th novel that I wrote. Oh. Um, I'm absolutely obsessed with it. It adds like elements of my first 49 books in there. So I'm really honestly proud of how it came out and how people have responded to it. So what's the summary of it? So a silent scream doesn't seem like much. It seems kind of inaudible. So pretty much it's about these four kids um, who are dealing with like their own personal struggles. Um, I'm very character based driven. Um, I know a lot of people like plot driven books. Um, and it's two weeks after school shooting. Um, I wanted to add that element in there. We live in the United States. There's school shootings all the time, unfortunately. Um, and like it's like Zachary, she is dealing with the fact that she lost her vocal abilities to sing and she's an actress and singer. So she's dealing with that. You have Ben who is like the top dog of the high school and then he like falls from grace. You have Gabe who, oh, I'm sorry. 
Yep, no, uh, Lane, sorry, there's a lot of names. Uh, Lane, who is gay, who's trying to accept that and come out, but he doesn't want to because he doesn't want to be like on the radar. And then there's Cass, who is um, dealing with the fact that her boyfriend cheated on her and one of the people that, the girl that he cheated on her with was one of the victims in the school shooting. And to make matters worse, their fifth friend, Gabe, is the one that did the school shooting. Oh my God. So yeah, so it's a lot of like internal, a lot of drama and angst and stuff. Yeah, that uh, with a PTSD or whatever the heck it is. Yeah, there are def- I touch on that a lot. Um, I touch on um, self acceptance. I think that's one of the hugest things in my books is self acceptance and also opening up to other people so they can help you instead of keeping stuff close, um, yeah. close to chest. On a more serious note, do you, th- I mean, this is serious, but do you think that this stuff propagates itself where these people, these sh- kids, because they're young, I, when I was in school, it wasn't no big deal. We just did what we did. And there's, a, there's maybe a, a fight after school and it's small, but now are they getting frustrated and then getting depressed? And then maybe it's propagating itself where this is frustrating and depressing more people where they end up maybe doing this again. I think, honestly, I think, I mean, even me, like I grew, I was in high school in the early 2000s. So I was around before social media, um, but you have it tenfold. You have it where they're getting bullied at home, then they're going home and getting, again, bullied at home. They're like, cause social media is not a nice thing. So I right. think with these kids, they're constantly getting bullied. Like they're getting it. it at school, social media, like anywhere so they're not really getting like a state like space and you look at a lot of these kids that kill uh shoot up shot up to school their parents weren't really around right. and there were so many trigger warnings and like oh we noticed this but you everyone turned a blind eye and it's kind of sad because it's like how many school shootings do we need to go through before you guys realize like there's an issue here i do think that uh, that mental issue is now becoming more apparent like i think it's hilarious that older generations are like that was never wrong no it was around you guys just never talked about it you just and stuffed i it think down. it's a little bit of a different kind of um i'll say solution but it's not the solution for the person being bullied but they're getting frustrated so from what i what you're saying here i can see how it could be the bullier that is kind of kind of the root cause for this but why are they bullying yeah and it's they have their own issues and that's yeah. actually what with one of the kids in uh the book He's the, he's the bully and you find out stuff about him and you're like, okay. It, I mean, the one thing I learned in college and especially just like characters written wise, but also in life, no one's a hundred percent evil and no one's a hundred percent good. There's always a reason for everything someone does. Sure. Absolutely. Um, a person can, like, I'm, I'm a magician. You see my little magic thing in the back. <laughs> it's about perception. You can shift the perception, like per, the perception of something, just by just thinking about it differently. Yeah. So I remember when I was in school, there was some, there was four guys that used to, you know, walk around behind me and crack me on the back of the head like that, really hard. And so they were bullying me, and it starts to piss you off. And these were big guys. I'm only five six, so you you just start thinking, well, how am I going to get back at these and stop this craziness? So what do you turn to? You end up thinking, well, I'm going to do something and that's probably where this stuff stems so if these bullies can be you know, take care of the bullies and teach them not to bully to educate them to kind of heal the bully before i don't know it's a it's a terrible thing I, it makes me crazy that people can go off like that well and then also it's on top of that it's people like teachers and parents need to not turn a blind eye to everything that they're seeing right they, they might not like, believe it like like you go home and you complain these guys are hitting me in the head oh toughen up <laughs> no, I'm sitting trying to be a student and they crack me in the back of the head. Yeah. Up and up. I feel like if you have a parent that's very like hard, like I grew up with a dad that was very like, not emotionally distant, but he was very like the same way, like toughen up, like grow some balls, like do it yourself. I mean, luckily in high school, I never was really bullied. I had it twice and I called them out instantly. So it wasn't like this huge thing for me, but there have been definitely times I feel like with parents, like you need some coddling. And if you don't have a parent that really coddles you, then you're kind of, you're, it's going to lead to more problems down the road. So, so back to your book. I mean, this is a good thing because it seems like something that these people that are, have, that are being bullied and feel, feeling a little depressed and 
and, and things, they can read it and they can relate to these characters in your book. And uh, is, is there like a solution that comes to the end or some, some things that can be done to help you? I mean, the biggest theme that I find in this book is to find people that you can lean on. I think you need to, I mean, for me personally, the biggest people I lean on is my friends that I surround myself with. And that's where I think with bullies, it's like you need to find either, like, I mean, a lot of times, it's, I'm, I know we're going back to it, but school shooters, like they don't ha really have close friends so they can lean, like they can lean on guidance counselor or teachers or students or like the, just find someone that you can relate to and connect with that can help you through things. And that's kind of where the name for Silent Screams came from. Well, my editor said it first, but I really like the idea of the name now, but it's, there's one point where Lane's like crying out, but he's by himself. He's keeping everything in. And I think a lot of the times, especially now, everyone's keeping everything in. They want to create these pi picture perfect images when they're, they're not great. They're broken inside. And I think my biggest advice for everyone is to A, be honest with who yourself and find people that you can go to when you're feeling lost and confused and broken. Good point. Good point. Well, I don't like to keep these too long. And I always say that after everyone, because time is a commodity. We've only got 24 hours in a day. So yeah. I would like to, can you, can you share with us, how can we get a hold of you? How can we find the book? How can we learn more? Um, maybe somebody has some ideas for another book and you can co-write it with somebody or maybe yeah. vice versa. Um, Who knows? Yeah, absolutely. I also, if you ever have like, I want to be a creative writing professor when I grow up, like a couple of years from now. Um, so if you ever have a nice book idea or like need advice, absolutely send it my way. Um, but you can find me on Instagram at Zachary Ryan Books. Um, Facebook, Zachary Ryan. And then for Twitter, it's Zachary Ryan Book. Yes, I know there's not an S at the end. Twitter was like, you cannot do that. So it's Zachary Ryan Book for Twitter, Zachary Ryan for Facebook, and Zachary Ryan Books for Instagram. So Zachary Ryan, is that your book name, your pen name? R yeah, so Zachary Linder's my last name, and then Zachary Ryan is my author name. Ryan's my middle name. Okie dokie. Yeah. Well, if you want to stay on after this, I do have some ideas I'd like to express for you to you yeah. with, uh, with, the, with the peace concept, and who knows, maybe we could pull something together and make something happen and save yeah. the world. <laughs> so, Hopefully. Zachary, I appreciate you taking the time and sharing your book, Silent Screams! <laughs> If anybody wants to know more about it, um, you can uh, find the links and things below this YouTube video. And if you like my YouTube channel, please subscribe to it and please share and spread the love because that's what we got to do and make this world a better place. Peace.